it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I want to answer a question that I get asked all of the time, which is how far in advance do you make your decorations for your cakes? And it varies depending on what decoration that it is and how I want it to sit on the cake. So I'm gonna go over a bunch of different cake pictures with you and I'm gonna show you different decorations on those pictures and let you know how far in advance I would make them. I hope that didn't confuse you. <laughs> so to start, I just wanna say this is a disclaimer that I am just letting you know what works for me. You may do something else that works for you and that is okay. You don't have to follow my set schedule if you have something else that works for you and also I only work with marshmallow fondant I never work with store-bought fondant I just find that store-bought fondant is way too soft personally for me some people have success with it I never did so I always make my own marshmallow fondant and I always add gum text powder tylose powder or CMC powder to the fondant you sprinkle a little bit on there knead it in there roll it out let it sit and it's gonna help it stretch it's gonna help it dry harder depending on how much you add and I just made a video talking about that and I'm going to link that in the description so I'm going to start with different kind of toppers for my cakes and let you know how far in advance I would make them so the first topper would be anything that needs to stand on its own like a number or like these ducks that I have on top of this barnyard cake and why did I say it like that <laughs> But I do have a video showing you how I make that barn cake and I will link that in the description. But those toppers need to really solidify and stand on their own. So I like to make them about two days in advance. And what I do, I will let them dry, let them sit out at room temperature after I make them. I don't put them in the refrigerator or the freezer. Let the air hit it. And then before I go to sleep that night, I turn it over so the back can be exposed to the air and that side can dry. And then the next morning I'll flip it over. So I keep flipping it over from front to back so the entire thing can dry and get really hard. The second kind of topper is anything that is made with rice cereal. And usually I make those over the course of two or three days. When I make the rice cereal, like this teddy bear, and I have a video showing you how I make that and I will link that below. But I have to make the rice cereal base first, like I roll out the head, I roll out the body, and I let it sit overnight so it can be exposed to the air so it can dry really hard. And then I can kind of shape it and cover it with buttercream or fondant or whatnot. But I need to give that rice cereal time to set before I start to work with it. So rice crispy toppers are made at least one day in advance. For the next example is this rainbow topper with this unicorn cake and I have a video showing you how I, I hate that I always am promoting my other videos, but maybe some people haven't seen them and they see a cake and you wanna learn how to make it. So I do have a video showing you how to make this unicorn cake that will be linked in the description. But if I'm making something like this rainbow topper that really has to hold its shape, it's coming down the side of the cake and it really needs time to dry. So I will make that like three to four days in advance. That way, the day that I make it, I let it sit out at room temperature. Then the next day, I will flip it over and let it dry from the back. And then the following day, flip it over again. And then the following day, flip it over again. So by the time I'm ready to put it on the cake, it's really hard and it's not gonna fall apart. If I am making a bow topper like this, and I have a video showing you how that will be linked in the description, I usually make bow toppers the same day. My bows don't have a lot of Tylose powder in them, but I find that when I put them on top of the cake, I can really get them into the correct position and then put in supports like paper towels so they will dry to the correct shape. So the next example is letters on the top of the cake. If I'm making a cake like this that has this one topper, I need to make that at least two days in advance, again, so I can flip it over and it will have time to dry. And the same thing for this one. Now the N and the E is covered with some buttercream, but I needed to make them two days in advance so they could dry really hard before I decorated them and put them on the cake. The same thing for the cookie. I made the cookie and then I let it dry before I put it on the cake and I have a video showing you how I make the cookie I will link that below the next kind of topper is an edible image topper now whenever I use edible images I always almost always put them on a fondant backing especially if they are going to go on the top of the cake like this Iron Man I need him to hold his shape and dry flat so he will stand up on his own 
So I made that about two days in advance. And I have a video showing you how to make the Iron Man cake that'll be linked below. The next example, it's not really a topper, but on this Sonic cake, those little mohawk pieces and the ears, I need to be able to shape them in the correct place. It's kind of like the bow. I need to put them on the same day that I make them so they can dry to the correct shape. Now there is some Tylose powder in there, so they are a little pliable while I'm putting them on the cake and then they dry hard. And I have a video showing you how to make the Sonic cake that will be linked below. And the last topper example is something like the crown on this baby shower cake. Whenever I make a crown or a tiara, I do that at least four to five days in advance because I have to shape it around a cylinder the first day so it holds its shape. And then I remove the cylinder and let it dry for a few days before I put it on the cake. And I have a video showing you how to make that crown and that will be linked below. Moving on to other decorations on the cake that aren't necessarily toppers. So I'm going back to the edible images and I have a video talking about how I use edible images and I will link that below. But back to this Iron Man cake. So that one on the top, I made two days in advance that way it could dry flat as well as those other two that are on the front of the cake because I put these on here I wanted them to dry flat I didn't want them to drive with a curve to them I don't know sometimes I just like my decorations to be flat it just gives it a more modern look so I made those about two days in advance that way they could dry really flat and hold their shape before I put them on the cake and when I dry them, I just, when I, when I dry all of these, I leave them out at room temperature just so the air can hit it and really start to dry it out. Now, if I'm making decorations that should contour to the shape of the cake, I'm going to make that the same day that I put it on the cake. And I'm going to show you this Friends cake, for example. And if you know me, you know Friends is one of my favorite shows other than Game of Thrones. <laughs> and House of the Dragon, but anyway. So that couch on here, and I have a video showing you how I make that, that'll be linked below. Do you see how it's kind of curved to the shape of the cake? I was able to make that the same day and then put it on the cake. The same thing goes for the Central Perk logo, that happy birthday whiteboard, and also the picture frame. They are all, bleh, they are all <laughs> contoured to the shape of the cake, so I made them the same day. Now looking at the other decorations on the cake, like the little signs that say, let's play bamboozled, or I know! <laughs> Those I made two to three days in advance, so they could really dry before I took an edible marker and wrote on them. If you're writing on a piece of fondant with edible marker, you want it to dry hard before you start to draw on it. If you draw on soft fondant, it's gonna drag and it's gonna be so annoying. <laughs> so you want your fondant to be hard. So I made those signs and the chick and the duck and the turkey and that little weird dog that Chandler and Joey rode in on when they won the apartment. <laughs> Those were all made a few days, like two days in advance so they could dry flat and then I put them on the cake. And then there are cakes that have little small details like back to this bubble, teddy bear bubble cake. Those bubbles I make at least a day in advance. They're fondant bubbles. Some people get on me for making fondant bubbles. I like to make them. I know how to put them on the cake so they don't collapse or whatever. I have a video showing you how to do that and I will link that below. If you use styrofoam or chocolate, you can probably put them on the same day. However, this is just the way that I do it. I like to make the balls a day in advance so they can hold their shape and be really round before I put them on the cake. And the same thing for these pumpkins on this Nightmare Before Christmas cake. I made them the day before and then put them on the cake. So now I just wanna show you a couple examples of cakes that I made with different decorations on them and let you know how far in advance I made the decorations. And I have some pictures here cause I don't remember what they look like. <laughs> so starting with this woodland animal cake. Those animals were made about two to three days in advance so they could dry hard and hold their shape, especially the fox that's on top of the cake. And then the mushrooms and the acorns and the leaves were made the same day that I put it on the cake. The next example is this graduation cake that I made. Now I have a video showing you how I make a graduation cap and I will link that below. But with graduation caps, it's very important for that square. It's called something. It's not the square. I forget what it's called. <laughs> but is it a mortar? I don't know. That square has to hold its shape and not droop down the side. So I always make that part at least four to five days in advance, flipping it over in between. And then all of the other decorations on the cake were made the same day. Another example is this popcorn cake that I made. Ow, I just got a paper cut. <laughs> uh, the popcorn that was made a day or two in advance so that popcorn could hold its shape 
and I wouldn't distort it as I was putting it on the cake. And I have a video showing you how to make the popcorn cake. I will link that below. But that number topper, that was also made one to two days in advance so it can hold its shape. The name and the popcorn sign were made the day of. The popcorn sign is contoured to the shape of the cake and the name is just on the cake board. So I'm able to make those the same day. And finally, anything that has panels on it, like this Fortnite cake, which I have a video showing you how I make that, that will be linked below. And also this shoebox cake. When using the fondant paneling method, you have to make the panels first and let them dry so they're not super hard, but hard enough that they hold their shape that you can cut them to the right size and assemble them on the cake. And I have videos showing you how to make the, the box using the paneling method. That'll be linked in the description. Okay, I know I look different, <laughs> but I posted this video in my Facebook group last night and a very important question was brought up that I totally forgot to address in this video, so I needed to add this in. One of my members said, I talked about how far in advance do I make my cake decorations, but I didn't say how far in advance can you make the cake decorations, and there is a big difference. So I personally prefer to make all the decorations the same week that I'm making the cakes. That's why most of them were either the day of or up to five days in advance. The reason being is because I like to make the decorations the size that I want them to be on the cake. And I like to go over to my cake once it is frosted and in the refrigerator and measure wherever I want to put like the name or a rainbow or a topper. And I want to see how much space that I have on the cake so I know how big to make it. Now, can you estimate it? Yes, you can say I'm going to put this on a six inch cake. Like let's say it's a crown topper. I'm going to put this on a six inch cake. It has to be a little smaller than six inches so it fits. Yes, you can do that. But just me personally, I like to measure my cakes before I make the decorations. Now I just want to quickly talk about how far in advance you can make some decorations. So something like a crown or a tiara topper that has to dry really hard or a number or anything that's going to stand alone on the top of the cake. I would say that you can make that up to a month in advance if you would like. The longer that it sits out, the harder that it's going to get and the more sturdier it's going to be. Now decorations like the bow topper that I talked about, I and I said I like to make them the day that I'm putting them on the cake just because I like to shape them and I like to put the bow in the right position and I had it cascading down the side of the cake and I want it to dry when it is on the cake so it can kind of contour to the cake. That 3D teddy bear that I made, since I covered that in buttercream icing, if I made that in advance and then tried to transfer it onto the cake, the buttercream, that's American buttercream, it forms a crust and those little fur points <laughs> that form on it can crack and break as you move it. So I just prefer to make that teddy bear as I'm putting it on the cake. That way I can position it onto the cake wherever I want it to be. Make sure that the legs aren't going to hang over or that the legs could hang over if I wanted them to. You can make those Rice Krispie decorations, I would say one to two weeks in advance but I would like to assemble it the day that I'm putting it on the cake. I just wanna put it right on the cake, not assemble it elsewhere and transfer it. Now, if you're making decorations in advance, there are a few ways that you can store them. And like I mentioned in the video, some of them I wanted to dry flat, like the edible images or the toppers. I want them to dry flat so they can hold their shape before I put them on the cake. So when I make them, I just leave them on a cutting board so they can dry flat. If I want them to contour to the shape of the cake, what I'm gonna do is get a styrofoam cake dummy that is the size of the cake that I'm putting it on. So this is a six inch dummy. So if I'm putting it on a six inch cake, I would dry the decorations with the curve. You could stick two little push pins in the bottom so it doesn't slide around. And then if I'm making a name, I would just drape the name over the cake so it can dry with a curve to it. However, I don't want this is me personally, whatever works for you, works for you. And I always say that because I get people saying that, well, I do it this way and it works for me and that's fine. But I find that if I'm gonna dry something with a curve to it, the fondant is kind of thin. It's going to be susceptible to cracking and breaking as I'm moving it. If it's too dry, and this has happened before, I lift the name off of here to go put it on the cake and it breaks. 
That's why I like the name to be a little bit pliable when I'm putting on the cake so I don't break the fondant and I can just maneuver it into the right position. Once it's dry, it's solid and you're not going to be able to shape the letters and kind of like move the loops in the letters. It, it is what it is with that, which is fine, but I wouldn't make a name, me personally, more than two days in advance. If you want to make it longer in advance, you're gonna to wanna to keep it, wait, longer in advance? <laughs> if you're gonna to wanna to make it a few days in advance, you're going to wanna to keep it pliable. You would do that by putting it in a Ziploc bag. Now, and I know I'm rambling, but I feel like this is important information. Storing something in a Ziploc bag, I would only do it for about a week or two. Once it's stored in the Ziploc bag, the texture can change. And if you're using dust or airbrushing, the coloring could be off and eventually it is going to start to set hard. To show you an example, I did in my Facebook group um, a couple months ago, I did a live where I, where I taught them how to do a two-dimensional Minnie Mouse. And I get these Mylar, is it Mylar? <laughs> these Mylar envelopes from when I order icing image sheets and I always keep these envelopes. So I store decorations in these envelopes after I put them in a Ziploc bag. This is the Minnie Mouse that I made and it's a little difficult to tell. The texture is off. The coloring is starting to blend together. It doesn't look horrible. It looks okay. I mean, I could still use it on a cake. Wait, I'm gonna smell it. It doesn't smell bad or anything. However, it has dried hard. I cannot contour this to the shape of the cake. It has been in this envelope probably for like three months right now because <laughs> I did that live so long ago. So it has dried flat, which isn't an issue. Like I like to put flat images on my cake, but look at the, the eyelashes. I used an edible marker on these eyelashes and they're starting to bleed. So is it bad? No, could I use it maybe? Maybe I would use it on a cake if I'm giving it away for free or doing a discount, but I, I wouldn't make something like this personally more than two weeks in advance and storing it in the Ziploc bag. But again, if you made this and you want it to contour to the shape of the cake, store it on, the, on a cake dummy the size of the cake that you wanna make it and it'll dry with a curve to it and you could just leave this out at room temperature for a couple weeks if you need to make it in advance. So I hope that cleared everything up and let's go back to yesterday me. <laughs> so I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments about this, leave it below. And just a reminder, I do have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. The top two tiers of my program do have access to my exclusive Facebook group. And in that group, I go live and we talk about pricing. We give pricing advice. You have direct access to me and a wonderful group of people. So I would love to have you aboard. All that information will be listed in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. If you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.